you have come to the place where you can learn to harness the power of intention, to create subconscious beliefs that serve you, and to gain insights that allow you to create a life personally and professionally that you desire. This is the place where you leverage your subconscious mind and design your destiny. Join me now, your host, Penny Chason. Hey, hey, joyful souls, Penny here. I'm going to talk to you today about a question that someone asked me in my Facebook group. I have a private Facebook group for those who have learned self-hypnosis with me. And I've been playing with the idea of hosting roundtable discussions. And right now that's exclusive to people who've worked with me. But this question came up and I thought that it's something that would benefit you as well. So the question that came up was, you know, how do I have a positive attitude when I already feel frustrated that I'm doing everything myself, despite asking for help within a pandemic that's made it difficult to get that help. And I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people who are really getting fatigued on just all of the things that have been going on for a year now. And people in the self-development space, we know how important it it is to have a positive attitude, positive mindset. And I'm always hearing about, oh, you got a high vibe, you got a high vibe. Well, you know, life is reality. And we're not robots. We can't shut off our emotions. We can't control things outside of ourselves. Control is an illusion. You've heard me say that before. It's one of the most beautiful lessons that I have learned in the last two and a half years is that control is an illusion because it allowed me to go into this whole pandemic situation from a complete sense of peace. Now, that doesn't mean I didn't get stressed at times, but in terms of needing to be in control of what was happening, I was able to let that go so I could focus on what needed my attention the most. So she asked, how do I help with a positive attitude when I'm frustrated? So the first thing that I want to do to take this apart is to address the issue of frustration. Frustration is what I view in my practice as a secondary emotion. So think of having an issue come up and you attempt to address the issue and what you're doing is not working, except instead of an issue, it's a feeling. So maybe you're angry that you can't get the help that you need. Maybe you're feeling alone in doing all that you're doing. Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed And we attempt to address that in some way. And that secondary feeling, when we're not addressing it in a way that satisfies the emotion, what will happen is we become frustrated. Now, what I took out of this question is that her frustration is coming in because she is asking for help. And that help's not coming because of the pandemic situation. It's difficult to find this help. So she's overwhelmed. She's stressed doing all the things. And she is attempting to satisfy what is causing her overwhelm and stress in a way that successfully satisfies the emotion. However, it's still not being completed because even though she's asking for the help, the right person is not out there. Okay. So what we have to do is when we reach this level of frustration, we have to realize that, and she does in this question, what I'm doing is not working because the pandemic's made it difficult to find help. The first place that I would go with this, she asked how to continue to ask for help 
with a positive attitude. First of all, one has nothing to do with the other. Okay, because we can ask for help. We don't have to have a positive attitude to ask for that help. It obviously helps if we have a positive attitude when we're asking for help. But having a positive attitude is a choice. We get to choose to be positive as we ask for that help. The way that I would look at this is to reframe what is going on here. There is a story here that the pandemic has made it difficult to obtain help. I don't know about your experiences, but I know from my personal experience and also from uh, advice that has been given to me by other entrepreneurs is that sometimes you have to go through two or three or four assistants before you find someone who clicks with you in terms of, is it a good match personality-wise? Is it a good match in terms of skill sets and the way that you function so that you complement one another in a way? So basically what I'm saying is that, you know, sometimes you have to try on help and assistance like you're trying on a new pair of shoes. And you just have to keep adjusting and trying on different things until you find what fits right. The way that I would look at this is to reframe it as I seek help. I get to learn more about myself and what it is that I need to be successful. Now, that doesn't mean it's always going to be unicorns and rainbows. I know I say that all the time. You know, sometimes we have to look at what we have to do and how we have to show up to create the life we want. Some things we don't like to do. And the way that I reframe that is this is what I get to do so I can be successful. This is what I get to do so I can attract more clients. This is what I get to do so I can close a client in booking for sessions or workshop or whatever the case may be. So the first thing I would say is allow yourself to feel your feelings because we're all burnt out on this pandemic thing. You know, it's always giving us new and different challenges. And we have been in a mode of adaptation for a year now. So that's everyone is a different place in life. And as to the degree in which that impacts us, the Other thing that I would say is that maybe look at all the things that you're doing and see what you can get rid of to make it easy. I have a colleague who believes in simplicity. Forget sales pages. Forget all the things. When she launches something, she sends an email with a link to a Google Doc If you like what you see on the Google Doc, let her know. You sign up and you pay. No sales pages, no copy, none of those things. Quick and easy. So I'm wondering, for some people, this may not apply to everyone, how can you simplify and streamline and get rid of the things that you don't need to be doing so that you can make it easy and light? while you were seeking the right person to come in to assist you. Because when we're feeling frustrated, that's telling us, frustration tells us, hello, mind, what you're doing is not working. We need to do something different. So even if it's only temporary, adjust things and get into this place where you can create what it is that you want from a place of ease, from a place of it being light. When you're looking at these things, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to do this again. No, you get to do it. Because when you're in the process of putting yourself out into the world to impact and change others' lives, if that's your vision and your goal, then this thing is something that you get to do to make that happen. Even if it's something that you don't like 
have some grace with yourself. Because when we get into the cycle of frustration, what can happen is without our awareness and without any intent, we can begin to get our subconscious mind into a state of negative thinking. We can get our subconscious mind into a state of looking for problems. We can get our subconscious mind into a state of leaning to the negative and not the positive. So this is one area where mindset does come into play, but you have to recognize what your feelings are telling you and address it the best that you can and allow that awareness and the knowing that you can change, give you a sense of air fingers quote control because change is within your power. Awareness is your most powerful tool. And when you're feeling frustrated and you need a moment, if you need to go and find a pillow and pound the pillow or scream into the pillow or take a walk outside and just breathe the fresh air and completely disconnect so that you can recenter and refocus, or if heaven forbid you need to take a day off to allow the stress to bleed off, that's okay. When we get into the cycle of feeling we have to push, 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 we just stress ourselves out. We should be in the state where we're feeling pulled to do what we're doing. And that has been a hard lesson for me to learn over the last two and a half years, to feel pulled instead of pushing. And I'm just going to let you put that into your imaginary pipe and smoke it (laughs) and see what comes out of that for you. Just sit with it and see what that means for you. It's going to mean something a little different for everyone else. But I hope that this answers the question about how to continue to ask for help with a positive attitude when you're already frustrated because you're doing everything despite the fact that you've been asking for help and that this pandemic has been making it difficult to get that help. There's a lot to unpack there, but I feel like we kind of hit the high points. Hopefully, some of this resonates with you and that there is some nugget within this episode that you can take away and you can apply to your own life, even if you're not an online entrepreneur, even if you're not seeking help. It's a way of looking at things and shifting and reframing and by all means, giving you permission to feel your feelings. I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in today. I would love it if you would head over to iTunes and leave a positive review about how this episode has helped you to improve your life. When you leave a positive review, it helps us to reach even more people, helping them to change their lives. And that positive energy and vibration of sharing comes back to you as we spread the message of how you can use the power of intention, creating stronger subconscious beliefs, and raising our vibration to create the life that we desire the one that we're here to truly live so that we can fulfill our purpose in life. Once again, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.